welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how you can create a simple voting feature on your Wix website. Just a heads up, this is going to involve some coding, also known as Wix code or Velo. But don't worry, we're going to give you all the code you need and guide you through step by step. Let's get started. We've chosen a really simple template on Wix. Uh, this is an ice cream website and we're going to show you how you can get people to vote for their favourite flavours. So you can use this voting system in so many different ways. We've had a client that has an art gallery and had people vote for their favorite piece of artwork online. You could do it with food, you could do it with whatever you want basically. Um, so this video is meant to inspire and show you how you can achieve it, but you can really apply it in any way possible. So the first thing we need to do is turn on dev mode. So if you go up to the top left of your Wix editor, you'll see dev mode and press turn on. A few things are going to happen here. Firstly, you'll see the screen changes slightly. All of a sudden we have this code panel at the bottom and we have a few new options over on the left hand side. But this also enables more advanced features and allows us to code and change uh, properties of different elements within the website. So we're going to be using a database today um, and essentially what we're going to do is have some different flavors in a database uh, and we're going to connect it to a repeater on the page of the website uh, and have people vote via the database. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the left hand side and go to databases. You may see some that are already here. Um, Wix will auto populate these, for example, if you have a subscriber form on your website, um, online ordering, that kind of thing. Uh, but we actually want to go to here and press the blue plus button. Then you're going to hit new collection. Once you're here, we can name it. So I'm going to call it voting and you can leave this as default. Then go into additional settings and you want to change the permissions to be custom use. Then we're going to press set custom permissions. Now the reason for this is whilst we want the website to read the data in the database, we also need to write new data to it too. Um, and that's going to collect the votes. So we're going to assign read collection. Um, so we can do that to anyone, create content, anyone update is going to be anyone, but delete content is going to be admin only. We're going to press set and create collection. Okay, so once Wix has worked its magic, it will present you with a screen a little bit like this. Essentially, this is a glorified Excel spreadsheet. Um, so it's got your different columns, which are your different data fields, and your different rows are the data records. Um, so you can see by default, there is one called title. We're actually gonna use this one today, uh, but we're gonna rename it. So if you click properties, you can see the field name. I'm gonna change this to ice cream flavors. Now, because it's the title, we can't actually change the key or the type of field that it is because it's the default um, kind of identification for the record. So we'll just press save because that's fine for our use. We only need to use text. The next thing we're going to do is create an image field. Um, and you can see here that you've got all these different field types. So in this case, we're going to select image. Um, there are so many different things that you can do with a Wix database and I would definitely recommend doing your research uh, But today we're gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm not gonna go too in-depth as to what everything does um, Because I want you guys to be able to achieve the end result The last thing we need to do is create a votes field. So I'm gonna call this votes I'm gonna change the type to number and press save Okay, so once you're at this point, we can create our different flavors. So I'm gonna put vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. And I'm just gonna find some images. Once you've created your flavors um, or whatever you want people to vote for and chosen an image, you need to make sure that you set all of the vote fields to zero. Otherwise, when we run the code later, it's gonna get confused because there's no number there to start with, so there's nothing to add to, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm back on my page where I wanna have the vote. Um, and as you can see, I've got a blank space and I've created two things. I've put a title, vote for your favorite, and also some text that says, thanks for voting. Um, so we're gonna leave that there for now. The next thing we need is a repeater. So if you go to the add button and go down to list, blank repeaters and I'm going to choose this one it's got three columns which is perfect for what we need 
and we need a couple more things here so firstly we're going to need another text box so i'm just going to duplicate this really quick and i'm going to just edit it to fit within the box and i'm going to just type in here flavor um, so essentially, if you haven't used a repeater before, if you add an item or an element to one container, it will add it to all of the rest. So as you can see, I've added this text box and we can see it on either side. Um, so that is how they work. So we need a title. I'm also going to just add a highlight to it and change the color just so that we can actually see it. And we're also going to need a button as well so that people can vote. Uh, and just a side note, by no means is this going to be the most beautiful <laughs> implementation of this uh, possible. Uh, it's just really so that you can understand how the system works. Um, cool. So once we have that, we're just going to rename a couple of things. Um, so if you select your text where you're going to have your flavor um, and click down in the bottom right, you get these different options here. Um, so this is part of dev mode. So if you've never seen this before, essentially what it allows you to do is change the name and different functions of the element on the page. So we wanna change this to title text. And it's really important that you get the correct capitalization of the words um, because JavaScript is really sensitive uh, when it comes to caps and different things. Um, so we're gonna call this title text. We're gonna call this vote button. And finally, we're gonna select the uh, thank you text and we're gonna call this success. Okay, those will come um, into play later. So it's really important that you've named those correctly, otherwise the code won't work. So the next part is connecting our repeater to our data. So what you're gonna do is come into add and you're gonna see a new option now for content manager. You wanna select data set. Essentially a data set creates a link between your page and the database in the back end. Once it's on your page, um, it's worth noting that you won't actually see this within the live website. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you place it as long as you can access the settings, um, but you won't see it on the live website. Uh, so you're gonna go to settings. And the first thing we're gonna do is choose a collection. So this is gonna be our voting uh, collection that we made earlier, the database. So you can do that. And I'm just gonna rename this to voting data. So it's really clear to understand. Now the important thing here is in mode, you need to change this to read and write. If you remember earlier, I said that we're gonna read the information from the database in regards to the flavors, but then we're gonna write the votes to the database. So it's important to select that. Then you can close out of that. Now, if we go into our repeater, the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna connect the title text to the flavors. So you'll see this little connect to data link here. If you click that, choose the data set, which we've just created and then the text is gonna to connect to ice cream flavors. And already what you will see is it's pulling through the data. So we've got three different flavors. Um, so we've got three different containers here, chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Next, we're gonna connect the background image to the image we've selected in the database. So again, click on the background, connect to data, voting data set, and image. And you will see our images pull through. Perfect, so that's what we need to do to connect to the data. So now we're reading the data on the live website. Now we need to implement some code to count the votes. First thing I'm gonna do is just change the text on this button to vote. And then we are gonna put some code in. Okay guys, so what you wanna do is select one of the vote buttons, go down to open, and you wanna select on click. So essentially what these event handlers do is allow you to put code on certain actions. So for example, when someone clicks on an element, if someone double clicks, you can then put code in there to trigger um, a response. So in this example, it's just gonna be when someone clicks the vote button, we are gonna put this code in. Okay, so this is the code we're gonna use and I will put a link in the description as well so that you can copy and paste this into your project. Uh, I'm just gonna go through what each line kind of does roughly just so you can kind of understand the context. Um, so first of all, this here is basically telling the code that we want to um, refer to a particular item within the repeater. So in this case, for example, if we're in the strawberry box, we wanna make sure that we're voting for strawberry. Um, 
please excuse me if you're more proficient in JavaScript or Velo. I'm trying to make this as simple and easy as un to understand as possible. Um, so I'm not going to be too technical about it. Um, and then we've got a couple of declarations here. So let current item equal um, the data set current item and the current votes. This is basically going to retrieve the current amount of votes that are in the database. And then on this next line, we are going to retrieve that number of current votes and add one to it. Finally, we're going to save that. We're going to get rid of the vote button and the text, and we're going to show our success message here. One last thing we need to do is just click on the success message and the default value needs to be hidden. Um, so when you load the page, you won't actually see that text until someone has voted. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to publish our site so that the data goes live. And then you can visit your new site. We can now see that we've got our three different flavors here and you can vote. So let's vote for vanilla in this example. It gets rid of the button and the text and just says thanks for voting. If we go back over to the editor, you can double click in voting data that will open up the database. And you can see now that we've got one vote against vanilla. Okay, so there you have it. Now you've got a really basic voting system on your website that will collect votes. Um, so as I said before, you could use this for so many different things um, and the possibilities are kind of endless. You can make this a little bit more complex as well. So for example, you may require email registration or someone to be logged into your website. Um, so there's lots of different features that you can implement. Um, and if you guys want any help with that, our agency are here. Um, so we are Dimension Creative and I will leave all of our links in the description. Um, but have fun experiment with it and uh, good luck thanks for watching